So on this table, this is everything you're going to need to install this dash cam. So here I have the hardwire kit, which enables this dash cam to go into parking mode. I have the dash cam itself. This hardwire kit does not come with a dash cam kit. In Canada, it's an extra 20 Canadian dollars. I have a 128 gigabyte Samsung Evo micro SD card. I believe that the 64 gigabyte card is more than enough, but I just went with 128 for the extra recording time. And it's only a couple dollars more expensive than the 64 gigabyte ones. So I just decided to pay a little more to get a little bit more recording time. In this case, the micro SD should be fast enough for the dash cam recording. Here I want to note that on Amazon, I see a lot of reviews saying that they get a fake micro SD card or the Amazon stock gets mixed with the fake and real micro SD cards. But in this case, if the side of the micro SD card is white, then it should be real. And if it's black, then you might have a fake. So again, just do your research and see if it's a real fake card and you can also test the speeds on your computer. So I also bought a fuse tester for this installation. We're going to use this tester to find out which end of the fuse is applying power and which side of the fuse is drawing power. This is going to be important when we install our fuse taps because we want to install the fuse taps in the right way so that the fuse will blow instead of short circuiting. And lastly here I have fuse taps that fit the 2017 Honda CRVs. So depending on the make and model, you might need a different type of fuse tap, which I will go into detail in a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do here is unbox the dash cam and I'm going to show you guys what comes with it. So the main thing that comes in the box is going to be the dash camera and it comes mounted on this GPS module, which I'm not exactly sure what it does, but you're going to be mounting this to the windshield. It also comes with the rear camera, which is half the size of the front unit. And then it comes with this wire that allows you to run and connect the front unit to the rear unit. So here's a power cable that allows you to get power from the cigarette lighter, but we're not gonna be doing that because if you do it this way, it's much easier, but you won't have parking mode enabled. The kit also comes with a little pry tool to help you tuck your wires and stuff. And that comes with a little USB cable to connect to your computer for updates and stuff, which I'll show you guys right after this. And then here are just some clips to help you manage your wires. And then lastly, they give you a couple extra mounting pads, which looks like two for the front and then two for the rear. So in order to connect the dash cam to the computer, I'm going to be using this USB cable that they provided in the power kit with the cigarette lighter. So I'm going to be opening the micro SD and I'm going to put it into the side of the dash cam. So here's a note about the type of micro SD that you need to use with this dash cam. You can pause it here if you want to take a read and see exactly what specs you need. All right, so the first thing you want to do is put the micro SD card into the dash cam. And then with the USB cable, you want to connect the dash cam to your computer. And this just gives the dash cam some power. So the first thing it's gonna ask you to do is to format the card. And all you have to do is click OK. And then there you go, the camera is formatted and the card is ready to be put into the computer. So take your card and use whatever adapters you need and then plug this into your computer. An alternative to using a micro SD card reader is to put the micro SD card into the camera and use the shorter cable to connect to your computer. Apparently the shorter cable puts the camera in card reader mode, but the longer cable only supplies power. So when you plug your micro SD into the computer, this is what you should see on the micro SD card. There's DCIM and then there's this text file. Following the instructions on the VFO website, which I will link down below, we're going to do a couple of things to update the camera. I just want to make a note here that on this website, there are many different camera firmwares that you can download. But for the purpose of this video, this installation is going to apply for the A129s and also the A119 V3 dash camera. So first step, use a memory card formatted by the camera or the computer. And we already did that step since we formatted it on the camera. So step two is insert the card in the camera and connect it to the computer. And then moving on to step three, it says copy this file on the root of the card. So here's the file and all we have to do is save it onto the card. So here, save as, and then right onto this removable disc, which is the micro SD card. So open folder and we're just gonna double check that's here. And then step five, all you have to do is reconnect the camera to your computer and wait a few seconds until the camera restart. The front LED will be blinking while upgrading. We're going to eject and we're gonna go back to the camera. So coming back to the camera, I'm gonna put my micro SD in 
and then I'm going to plug this wire into the computer for some power. So here on the camera you can see that it's blinking like it says, so that's a good sign because we know it's updating. Alright, now that the camera is updated, I'm going to be going through some of the features of this camera and then teaching you guys how to use the app. So in order to connect the camera with the phone, I'm just going to follow what the app says and I just downloaded this app off the Play Store. So I was going to show you guys how to use the app with the dash cam, but when I tried to connect the phone and the dash cam together, for some reason the app kept crashing. And just to give you guys a little background information, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. This phone is four years old and it runs other programs fine, so it doesn't really make sense that it doesn't run this program. And then doing a little bit of reading on the Play Store, I found out that this app works much better with iPhones and for some reason, like people with S9s, S10s, it also crashes. So if you have an Android, that could be a problem. But regardless, I'm still going to use the dash cam. So basically in order to connect the camera, you take the dash cam and you hold this button to turn on the Wi-Fi. And then all I have to do is look for the Wi-Fi here, so UFO A129. And then okay, it's connected, it says internet might not be available. So I back out. And I click connect your camera. Oh. So for some reason it works now, but before I tried multiple times and it kept crashing. So maybe if you have an Android, um, just watch out in case it crashes. But we're going to be using the phone to help us adjust our camera angle before we stick it on with the double-sided tape. And this phone app lets you do a lot of things like save videos on the spot. Again, just review what's on the camera right now. And uh, other features I'm not going to go into, but I did hear that it's one of the better apps for dash cams and there are plenty of videos on YouTube if you want to do a little more research on what this app can do. So I'm just going to show you guys some basic functions of the dash cam. So to start off, the button on the right allows you to switch the display from the front to the back and to having both of them. Holding this button will also enable Wi-Fi mode if you want to connect it to your app. So here's the mic button. If you turn it off, the mic light goes off and it's not recording audio. So the middle button is the emergency recording button. And basically what it does is locks the file that you're recording so that it doesn't loop and write over it. So here's the recording button and when you click it, this flashes to let you know that it's not recording. And in order to get to the other settings, you have to turn off the recording first. And then quickly going over the settings here, there's nine pages of settings. I'm not gonna show them all to you guys, but some of the more important ones is like exposure. So you can adjust the front and the rear exposure by a little bit if you think it's too bright or too dark. Um, there's a wide dynamic range mode. So this one, most people recommend it turned on. So in parking mode, you have a couple options. You can do low bitrate recording. You can record a time lapse or you can do auto event detection. So the parking G sensor here, so when your car is parked and the dash cam is in parking mode, um, it'll detect if your car gets hit and then the camera will turn on. Or it might actually record the previous 15 seconds and then the next 15 seconds or something like that. And then you also have some GPS options. So if you want like coordinates, you want speed to be recorded, all of that can be shown on the recording. First thing I did when I got this dash cam was turn off the beep sound here to start up only. To show you guys the beep is really annoying. And I think the last setting I want to show you guys is the languages. So there's plenty of languages. It's like Chinese, French, Spanish, Portuguese. So before taking this out and installing it, the last step we want to do is hook this up to the hardware kit. The hardware kit, again, if you're not sure, is going to allow the dash cam to go into parking mode. So if you're using it without the parking mode, then I say you're kind of missing out on the extra features you're paying for. So unwrapping the hardware kit, this end is pretty standard. I'm just going to warn you guys that if you're trying to get this dash cam, I see many complaints online that these two right angle. So here you can see this is kind of poor design. Once it's plugged in, you're probably not going to unplug it anyway, so I wouldn't say it's a huge deal. So putting the dash cam aside, I'm going to be installing these fuse taps onto this hardware kit. So I'm not a professional at installing electrical stuff or anything at all actually, but um, what I can tell from the videos online, so this wire is obviously the ground. And then the red wire says battery, so we're going to be tapping into a fuse that is on when the car is off. And then the last wire is to an accessory fuse. So something like the cigarette lighter that's only on when the car is on. All right, so this particular fuse kit has this type of end, or this fuse type is for the Honda CRV 2017. Like I told you guys, each car is going to have a different fuse type. So the best way to find the right type of fuse tap for your car is to pull a fuse out of your car and see what kind of end it has. 
and I'm going to put a picture up on the screen and the link in the description below to where I bought my fuse taps and this Amazon link also has the other two type of fuse taps. So this is also going to be my first time using a fuse tap. So on the wire end, I'm just going to copy what comes on the fuse tap itself. So comparing the end that they give us and the end that already comes on the fuse tap, the first part is going to be to hug onto the insulation. Second part is going to be to grab onto the wire. And then the third part here, which is open, is just going to connect to the other end. And then, and then after that, you can put this on top to, I guess, not expose the connection. All right, so I'm gonna start with the battery or the red wire end. And then I'm gonna put the end that they give us through here. So I want the first part to grab onto the wire. Okay, so holding it with one hand and then pliers in the other. All right, so I use the pliers to pinch the first part onto the insulation and it's really tight. Some people say it's not tight enough. The way I did it was just to pinch one side over the other and um, it seems pretty tight. So next I'm gonna pinch in the other one so that it makes contact with all the wires. And this is where you can use a soldering iron to solder this together instead. But since I don't have a soldering iron, I'm just going to pinch the metal onto the wires and it should be just as good. All right, so with the first connection clamped on, this is what it looks like. So obviously comparing it to the fuse adapter, um, it's not gonna be as clean, but it looks about the same and it should get the job done. So I use the pliers like this to help me get the connection together and it looks pretty good so now I'm just gonna put the insulation over it so before you make the connection with the other end you want to put the little plastic insulation thing over it first because once you make the connection you can't put the plastic over anymore so just to make sure the connection doesn't come off I'm gonna use the pliers to pinch it a bit and then I'm just gonna put the insulation over the connection alright so after you're done this should look something like this so now do the same thing for the yellow end. I just want to show you guys something I noticed when I was doing the yellow wire. So these little insulation covers actually have a right way they're supposed to go in. So you can see that on the red side, the long part is supposed to cover the connection. And then on this side, I messed up because one side is bigger than the other. And the big side is supposed to go on this side. So you can see here it's flipped around. Just giving you guys a little heads up. All I have to do is unplug these wires and then flip this around. So no big deal. So normally you probably want to heat shrink this, but I'm just gonna leave it for now in case the connection is not good. And when I install it and it's good, then I can um, heat shrink it after. So something important to note here is that the original fuse from the car always goes on the closer end of the fuse tap. Uh, the aftermarket one goes to the back. The aftermarket one also has to be smaller than the one in the front. So for me, I'm gonna be putting five amp fuses in here that came with the fuse tapping kit. And then this one, I'm going to look for a fuse on the car that I can use. So this kit comes with a bunch of fuses. It comes with 10s, 15s, and 5s. So for us, we're going to be using the 5s. And you can tell it's a 5 amp fuse because on the top, it uh, has a little transparent 5 on it. So these fuses were a little tough to put in, but um, they definitely fit. And that's going to be the last step of preparation we're going to need before we take this whole kit to the car. So now that we're done the preparation steps of updating the software, downloading the app on our phone, and preparing the hardware kit. Uh, we can take everything and go to the car for the installation. So once again, everything you're gonna need for this installation is gonna be linked in the description below. As well, I'm gonna link my own installation in the description below if you wanna follow that as a guide. Just a little disclaimer, the Amazon links down below will give me a little commission for every purchase that you guys make and that's at no extra cost to you guys. So if you guys like this video or you wanna support my channel, make sure you use the links down in the description below. Other than that, I hope this video helped you guys out. If you guys are here for the full installation, then I'll see you guys in part two of this dash cam installation video.